Next is the Mughal dynasty, and under the Mughal dynasty, education and literature flourished. In fact, by far, it can be seen as the golden period of all the Muslim dynasties that ruled the subcontinent. The Mughals, although were an entertainment-loving group of people and wanted fun, but together with that, they also stressed literary works and education. Literature and art flourished under the Mughals. Art in terms of paintings, and we are all aware of the miniature paintings that came about during the Mughal period. We see their structures, their architectural buildings and stuff that they put up. Amazing stuff, especially when you look at the grandeur and the size of these structures and all the calculations and mathematics that had to go about in them because these were very, very symmetric structures that the Mughals put up. So they had to have an extremely high level of mathematical knowledge and influence or especially have in their courts lots of mathematicians who knew what they were doing. Numerous books of foreign languages were translated into Persian. The work that we see that started in the Lodhi dynasty continues with the Mughals. They wanted their people to know more about the literary works from other parts of the world also. So, in spite of having developed their own lit literary works, they also brought literary works from other parts of the world and translated it into Persian so that their people could understand, could compare, could see the differences and the changes in the literary forms of writing of their own people and people from other parts of the world. Many biographies and historical events were written. Biographies, life stories about individuals themselves, began to be written in the Mughal era. The historical events obviously continued from some previous dynasties, as we saw in the shape of Ibn Battuta writing the historical events of his tours of India, that trend also continues with the Mughals. So under the Mughals, there is a lot of flourishing of art, literature, architecture, mathematics, sciences, as well as, of course, fun. There was music, there was dancing, all those kinds of things also flourished under the Mughals. But with the fun and entertainment, they believed that individuals needed literature and education. During this time, some famous scholars opened madrasas and helped spread Islamic education and the knowledge of Islam. So, not only were they focused on secular education, but scholars in religious education, Islamic education, in the Quran, the Hadith, the life of the prophets and all that stuff were there also. And so Islam spread under the Mughals in the Indian subcontinent, but together with this religious education in the madrasas, they were also provided practical skills and arts to lead a successful life. So the Mughals also realized that you had to have religious education, you had to have your Islamic teachings and principles and values and morals and all that. But together with that, they also believed that you needed to have secular education, you needed to have practical skills in order to survive. Whatever those practical skills were for that time period, those were taught to young people so that they could live a successful life in the future.